Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to episode two of our new, newish show, The Creative Lounge. This is brought to you by Photo Enthusiast Network, McKay Photography Academy, and of course, PhotoRec TV, the YouTube channel that you're watching this on. I'm so excited for this show. I've been excited for this show, and especially tonight's guest, Timothy Drury, intermedia artist. I'm going to talk exactly what that means. He's got such an interesting story. I'm going to let David give the full intro of, of that. But uh, this was, oh, let's say this was a, an embryo child of mine that I had years ago to bring on interesting guests and talk to them in the show and share their voices with the world. But it was David's brainchild that really got this ball moving and going. And so over the last couple of weeks and over the next couple of weeks, we'll be sitting down with interesting people to chat with them about what they do and their lives in and around photography, however that might be connected. And as I said, I'm so excited tonight to have on Timothy Drury. David and Allie, welcome to the show as well. And how are you guys doing? Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm yeah. doing better than two weeks back. <laughs> yeah, yes. we're doing okay. Timothy, wow. how are you doing, buddy? I'm doing just fine, actually, under the circumstances. <laughs> but uh, you guys have been through quite an ordeal. We can chat about that later, I guess. But my goodness. Yeah. Well, we're, we're doing good. Go Thank you. Uh, well, what, what I'd like to do here is I just wanted to start, first of all, again, welcome everybody. I see uh, our chat is going. Everybody's saying hello to everybody. We've got people kind of coming in, Arizona, California, oh, cool. all over the world. Actually. Oh, I wish I could see that, but that's yeah, that, that's so, all right. Um, <laughs> you, well, you might be able to, but I'm not quite no, sure. No, no, left. That's okay. That's <laughs> all right. Less so, you know, is tonight is uh, our second episode of Creative <clears throat> Lounge, and, you know, we have set this up to... to uh, really bring you, as Toby said, people that are, have interesting stories around and related to photography and image making. And we wanted it to be, uh, you know, a little bit loose in the sense of like, hey, we're all sitting around having a having a nice drink at the bar in the lounge and hanging out. Hello. And so if you're in the chat room or you're over there and you want to go get a drink, uh, we won't uh, we won't uh, shame you for leaving for a second. But you of do want to wait. Because before you leave for just a second, I want to read to you uh, just a little bit about our friend Timothy uh, and his background, and then we're going to dive right in. So Timothy uh, was born and raised in Los Angeles. He has been adding to his resume, his, his resume as a musician and artist since his first break with recording artist Don Henley in 1989. What? Yeah. He played <laughs> on Henley's End of the Innocence Tour and went yes, on to say... Indeed. The Eagle Cell Freezes Over Tour from 1994-2000, which, side note, is the first time I saw you live, and who knew that years later we would become friends? Because I was man. way up in the nosebleed seats for that Nosebleeds? show. Nosebleeds? Yeah, no was, problem, man. Glad I could hook you up. Those great yeah. seats. <laughs> he has played with Glenn Fry, Joe Walsh, White Snake, Don Felder, Stevie Nicks, Brian Adams, Melissa Etheridge, and the list goes on. He co-wrote Henley's single, Everything is Different Now, which was really re, sorry re-released on Henley's greatest hit CD and a song with Stevie Nicks that made me stronger. Uh, was produced by his old Henley touring mate. Here you go, Ali Cheryl Crow. Cheryl That's Crow. Ali's, yeah, you guys <laughs> were touring. Mate. Yeah, yeah, we toured together in Henley's band for a while, for a few years. Uh, Timothy has several co-writes with Don Felder, the former guitarist from the Eagles, on a CD "Road to Forever." He has played and written with some of the biggest names in the history of rock music, performing for literally millions of people all over the world along the way, from the biggest stages in the world, man. But why are we here tonight? His career as a photographer and videographer, it began decades ago, making images around the world during his travels as a musician. He spent years in the darkroom processing film. I love that. Making Me prints. too, man. I, I, I miss that. I love that. Yeah, and learning about his unique visual expression. Over the years, he's been a part of several group and solo gallery shows as a photographer, and his prints and his image lamps, which we'll be showing later, are widely collected around the world. You might see I have one over my shoulder. Yes. Uh, and I look, it's, I have this here. You have one. <laughs> so uh, yes. most recently, he has been performing in the U.S. and abroad with his intermedia shows, which combine original music performance and original imagery projected on a cube shaped screen of his own design known as the performance cube. 
He's also producing many new artists. He's mentoring, he's doing master classes and residencies. All are a part of what Timothy has to offer to the art community and the world. His very works, photographic prints, image lamps are here to view and to collect and his commissions are <laughs> accepted and encouraged. I had to Indeed. put that in there. Indeed. Okay, we'll start now to get your own image Please lamp. reach <laughs> out. This would be the perfect time. Anyway, with that, welcome, Timothy. Timothy oh, you, God. You welcome. After that, fun. man, this is yeah, going to be like a letdown after that. Uh, no, no. You, you know, Allie uh, and I, you <laughs> and your your lovely, beautiful wife, Kate, oh, uh, have been her. friends of ours for, for many years now. We actually met through photography on MySpace, everybody. Yes, MySpace. <laughs> Believe uh, it or not. Wow. Believe it or not. We did wow. not know at the time. I did not know that you were... I think it were you in his top one. eight, though, David? Were you in his top eight? Well, his top, eight. top eight, I'm sure. I'm sure okay. he was. Okay. Certainly. Okay. Impressive. Well, I'm impressed now. I totally forgot I top eight. What a random thing, your top eight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. So right. tonight, okay. Continue. Continue. Tonight, man, hey, yes, if, you're good, if you're good with it, Timothy, what, what we'd like to do <clears> is just take the next hour or so chat a little bit about the music. Uh, you know, you've got such an impressive background with music. Talk a little bit about that, but we really are gonna wanna head into where you're doing these incredible images, your collections, your gallery showings, and of course, this performance cube. Uh, you know, Allie and I have known you now for many years. In 2013, uh, we went to Greece. It was our first photography tour to Greece. Oh, you man. joined it, it and you took so us so great. Yeah, you, you took us some amazing places. And one of the best places, and we will get to Greece again, was the island of Sykonos. And yes. why don't, Timothy, why don't we start by you just sharing a little bit about that experience. Share with us about Sykonos and how important it is. And then I know Allie has something really special that she would like to share with uh, all those folks that are watching. Yeah, Allie took some amazing photographs of me, uh, believe it or not, there on Sykonos. Sykonos is an island in the uh, a GNC, and that's where my mother was born. And uh, so during our trip to Greece, we were able to also go to Sikinos for a few days. There's a picture right there that Allie took. That's, that's actually the room where my mother was born oh so many years ago. Um, uh, Timothy, that's the bed your mother was born in, if I'm not mistaken. I, it, Is that correct? It, possibly, probably, sure. <laughs> maybe. It's hard to tell because she, she had not been back in so many years. I went there with her in 2000 with my mom. That was the first time she'd been back in about 65 years, I guess, 60 years. She yeah. left um, Greece at the end of the Second World War with her father and then... Mm. Her mother joined them later. Uh, anyway, she was she was born there, so it's obviously a very special place for me. But to go there and be able to share it with a group of photographers and very curious, friendly people was amazing for me. I had been there a couple of times before that, so I kind of knew the lay of the land. That is not seeking us. That was Red there Rocks, <laughs> but a yeah, we'll, we'll similar kind of to topography. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this is like so the cool. back view of the stone house where my mother was born, and that faces out into the Aegean with a view of many other Greek islands in the distance, the Kiklades. Um, yeah. Anyway, what a magical, fantastic trip. And for me to be able to translate a little bit and show yeah. another perspective on how to shoot, because I'm not uh, a very technical shooter, as you know. Um, uh, so I was giving people maybe a different perspective away from what you were like valuable stuff you were teaching them. I was just trying to say, well, have you just turn around, look over there at, whoa, look, look at it this way. Let's forget about the, the, the f-stop and all this information for a minute. Um, what else can I say about that? My, my God, what a great trip that was. Well, I, I know, you know, you love shadow and light and Allie, um, Ali, I know that this moment you photographed those particular images in, in infrared black and white. And I know this is about your work, Timothy, but I think it would be valuable for people to know uh, kind of what took place at that moment. Because it was, I mean, it was goosebump stuff going on for all of us. And Ali captured a couple of those moments in the black and white infrared photography that she does. So Ali, maybe maybe you could share about, you know, Please those do. images. Yeah, yeah, that was quite a moment. Yeah, so those were taken in uh, uh, with a digital camera that's been converted to capture infrared. And um, that particular camera was black and white. And I thought it was the perfect 
medium for this rugged, uh, weather worn, torn house on the cliffs of this small Greek island. And it oh was such God. a such a really beautiful experience to visit that with you, Timothy, because I know that you have such a special relationship with your mom and she passed this down to you and it's um, it's kind of a labor of love sort of thing, and I know that you would, your your dream would be to restore it, but it's a it's a it's a big. Um, <laughs> That's quite an undertaking, <laughs> especially <laughs> now. Big undertaking, yes. It, th yes. There is no Listen. there's no Home Depot on Sicano. <laughs> there you would have to bring everything in on the ship and hire people to carry. Yes. Things up the cliff by hand. And well, it's donkeys that have to take all the materials up to this particular part yeah. of the island. And no, no joke. The front Crazy. of the <laughs> the front of the house is all steps. There's not a driveway. It's by pedestrian. <laughs> it's little alleyways, little those yes. classic alleys. You know, with it's the white just a photographer's dream to dream beautiful. in the summer the light and, is amazing there yeah. the light. it was it's just a really intense. special experience to be able to see that with you and just see it in general and and to to hear you talk about the tie you have to it through your mom um who's uh, uh still even though she's passed uh really um, a very very special person in your life oh absolutely <laughs> yeah Think and, about her yeah. all the time. She was very influential with me, uh, mm -hmm. with music, certainly. Not that she was a musician, but she was very into cinema and theater. And she was a voracious reader as well. <clears throat> she learned how to speak English and read and, and really dove into the arts in a big way. Um, so she turned me on to a lot of great uh, movies. And then the, the soundtracks from those movies sort of kind of steeped steeped in at a young age and that always mm. intrigued me when I started to play music uh, started to play the piano when I was about five but when I was 11 maybe 12 I started to write my own pieces pretty mm. more significant pieces for me personally and uh, and I was always steeped in that kind of Bernard Herman uh, very dramatic heavy soundtrack stuff even though I was just playing the piano somehow it kind of informs what you respond to what you go after but so she's very responsible for for that um and just this sense of awe and um wonder about about everything in general not just the arts mm. just you know the garden and people and uh animals and everything was just such a such a dear thing to her you know she was always so in awe of of uh, the beauty in the world so that definitely rubbed off on me mm -hmm. for sure and by beauty do you just mean visual beauty or no no any kind of beauty like emotional beauty mm -hmm. visual beauty for sure but a great meal or a great conversation she she would just be so enraptured with people listening to them speak she was a great listener and um any of my friends were always just in love with my mom right any girlfriend that i had seemed to be closer to my mom <laughs> than their own mom not closer but it was just a different kind of relationship sure. uh, she was uh, very lovable lovable for sure Mm -hmm. and, I, and I know, Timothy, that uh, when we were in Greece, in fact, uh, I know you can't see this right now, but I do see that uh, Carmen Walsh, who was with us on that tour, is in our chat oh, room. Hi, Carmen. She said those were very special moments on Sikinos. Uh, so glad I was able oh, to be there. Is. And uh, you know what's awesome, too, <laughs> yeah. Timothy? I don't Me know too. if you've seen it, but Carmen has taken up learning to play piano and sing, and she has put oh, herself yeah. out I there. I on have seen. Own. I just, I I'm just not, got a side note here because it's I'm cool. not so. I'm not active enough on Facebook to really, you know, chime in all the time. But I've seen and reacted to Carmen playing and singing. It's beautiful. It's really cool. Yeah. I had no idea. I just thought she was a really cool person. Was taking these great pictures on the island. Had a great <laughs> spirit. And here she is, like playing and singing. It's awesome. Yeah, really. she's just taking off on that. So, and I know the other thing that you 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 know, uh, we we want to move forward here in a second, but. 
I did want to say that uh, I know that you own a, still own, uh, that's been passed down to you a couple of those pieces. One of those pieces of property, I think uh, you're going to be selling, but another piece at some point, your dream would be to take and do our, your performance cube there on Sikinos. Oh, definitely. Lit for, up. For sure. And, of course. And also Must even create happen. an artist, an artist retreat there. So that yeah. still has never left me since 2013. Uh, oh, I'm uh, so glad to hear you say still, that. You know, that's so, that's fantastic, man. Well, yeah. <laughs> let let's get on it. What do you what do you got to say for yourself? Let's. All we need is a, is a little investment a <laughs> to make that happen. It would be fantastic. So if you're out there and you want to do an amazing investment, here you go. All yeah, right, for so sure, we, that will happen. But, but before we move away from from this Greece trip, yeah. I, I wasn't part Thank of this. You. I feel a little left out. Uh, I know. I'm sorry. Point. I hear there were some very special moments. I, I have to no. well, ask, what, what exactly is happening here? <laughs> What's, what's well, this is a very on? special moment. So I'm I'm on this tour and like, who's this guy that's coming out with the McKay's? Oh yeah, he's like a rock star, right? And they were giving me so much grief about the white snake thing and rocking and this gigantic hair dude that I had. And so I just was like, they're like, hey man, have you signed? Did you sign girls' boobs ever in the audience? And it's like, well, yeah, I have. Let me show you. And I was just, I'd kind of had it. I said, come over here, you little whippersnapper. That, that's Nick signed... Sharp, by the way, our, our, our logistics manager back end for MPA. So. <laughs> a lovely, lovely lad indeed. And I miss him. But I just wrote my yes. name, wrote my name right there on his boob. And look at David's, David's howling. I'm howling. And it was a really great, like, see, see what it's like. This, this, sum, this sums up very nicely uh, McKay Photography Academy moments. <laughs> yes. I, I have to admit, yeah, I was, I was oh, actually, look at that. That's yeah, see, there you and I are. Yeah. This was your buddy's place uh, that uh, sells... Um, uh, Lucumades. Yes. L Lucumades, and, which is just like like a lovely little puff ball with honey and walnuts and cinnamon on it. Oh, Lucumades. God, it and this is, it was called Lucuma, Lucumadatopia, like the... The Utopia for Lucumadas. And the guy had the biggest collection of metal and He's a huge great, white snake fan. Huge white snake fan, progressive music. He had tons of CDs right in the back there. You can see behind us. He had this <laughs> rack of CDs. So that was such a great place. That's on Santorini. Yeah, you know what's awesome here? And I want everybody to see this. All those cameras on the table... What's in front of me is all the crap I'm carrying around. And look at what Timothy's carrying around. And there's something to be said about that because... Is it just my it, phone? It's just my no, phone. No, it's not. Right? No, I don't think that was just your phone. I think that was that you had a small... That small... Was it a camera? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I had a yeah. Canon G12. That's right. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see from this view, but that's my little Canon G12, which is a yeah. great camera. Yeah, yeah and actually. we're going to talk about that, you know, because sometimes <laughs> everybody... And there's going to be a lot of people on here that are so into gear. And gear, you know, nothing wrong with that. But there's also going to be those people that feel left out like, oh, I don't I don't have the budget for, you know, four thousand dollars worth of camera gear. And, and we're going to talk about and show some of the images and images that you have sold and collections that were taken with a small camera. And, and Holga, and little, you know, the yeah, phone. Yeah, I've yeah. sold a lot of prints from from the phone. Holga was so, a particular favorite back in the back in the day for me. Yeah. So we'll, we'll definitely chat about that. I, I do want to say that that moment where you sign Nick's chest, uh, I was laughing, but inside I was heartbroken because I really was hoping that you would sign my chest later, but that never happened. <laughs> There's still time, David. Great. There's still oh, time. Wow. These dynamics just escaped me in the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah they should. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. But I also let, let's just dive in again, just a little bit more music, and then we're gonna we're gonna fast track into some of your photography. Sure, sure man, just but, guide it. Yeah. Well, you know what, dude? I I have been, you know, Toby. Maybe you can pull up that shot that accidentally came up there of Red Rocks with Timothy. Um, oh yeah. Oh yeah. That, too, too I was bad. out. I was out uh, about a week before this happened. I was uh, gonna be photographing a couple bands out at Red Rocks uh, that were there, and I called Timothy and said, Timothy, have you ever played Red Rocks? And he's like. Well, yeah, dude, I'm playing there next week. And I'm like, no way. It happened to be the very way. next night. And uh, so uh, Timothy was playing. They were opening for, I think, uh, I can't uh, say. Can uh, I say uh, Steve, Steve Miller. I think I it was say Steve it. I wasn't sure if I could say it. Okay. Royalties paid. I don't know how that goes. But here, uh, uh, Steve Miller. I, 
Yeah. yeah, I was behind the stage and, and snuck out behind Timothy, took that last shot. And this is right the after the classic the show, audience the in the background shot. shot. And uh, so that that was fun very night. cool and fun night uh, very being fun there night. with those guys. So so that, you know, let's talk just a little bit about your background. I mean, how did you go from a second? You, you moved from L.A. <clears throat> right. You, you moved to Sacramento. I know you went to Jesuit High School in Sacramento. I, I graduated from Jes- I graduated, I will tell you. From yeah. Jesuit High School in Sacramento, which was a great school. Uh, and then, I'm sorry, yeah, I kind of jumped in there. What? No, no, that's okay. And then just just what I'd love to hear is a little bit, uh, did you do photography in high school, music in high school, and then a little bit about your big break? No photography. No photography no, until no, much, okay. much later. Uh, photography came after I got that first gig with Don Henley, and I was touring a lot, and I was trying to pass the time in a productive way rather than just sitting around in the hotel room recovering from a hangover I'd rather walk around the city and take pictures so I went I was in Manhattan uh, ironically because my wife is from there my father is from there as well my wife's family is from there Uh, I went to one of those like crazy Larry camera joints and got an Olympus I got an Olympus OM 88 and a couple of lenses and just went nuts just started shooting so so many rolls of just when you were out on the road when i'm out on the road on days off Mm -hmm. uh and then i'd go home and take take a break and shoot shoot some more at home and then i would take all these rolls to the lab that i was going to in hollywood at the time um and then I, I uh, learned how to process my own film and make my own prints from my dear friend, Jerry Tarshis, who has, has departed as well now, but he was such a great dear friend, great spirited Russian guy, actually Ukrainian <laughs> Russian, but uh, taught me a lot of things, but he taught me about the dark room. He taught me about shooting uh, pictures. He was a phenomenal photographer. Um, yeah, some of the black and white images you might want to show. This was more like yeah. my earlier career where it was all black and white film. Some of it infrared. That looks like infrared black and white to me, mm-hmm. which I think it is. Uh, oh, yeah, here's a. there was a shot oh, yeah. I took uh, in Santa Monica of these people walking down the Third Street Promenade with an umbrella. And years later, my friend Valerie Carter also departed. Holy cow. Mm. lovely girl uh, singer did this record did a bunch of records but uh, she used this picture on the cover of her record and I shot a bunch of photographs of her for that record if you go online and look up Valerie Carter there's some YouTube of of songs of hers going by but it's a still shot of her this portrait I did of her face beautiful girl anyway that was an interesting uh, Interesting hey, time. can I? I'm gonna. I, I, I just real quick go back to that one, Toby, mm-hmm. if you wouldn't mind. Yep. Uh, just a side note, uh, <clears throat> because I wanted to just share. You know, this is an image that really captivated me, and it's it's interesting that so many times when we're on uh, teaching, we're out teaching, we're teaching people talk about you know everything being crisp or this and that, and here's a situation where. I think it's just lovely that there's this emotion of them actually being slightly uh, the movement because it, it gives a sense of movement and motion, which leads to emotion versus just hmm. a stagnant shot. And I just I just want people to, to recognize that sometimes, you know, the rules and sometimes you break the rules and sometimes the rules are just broken because you accidentally did it. It doesn't matter. However, <laughs> Bingo. however it comes up, man. <laughs> yeah, I don't know the story, but however it comes <laughs> up, that's what that captured, <clears throat> man. Well, the thing is, this, I, I'm going to have to chalk it up to a little bit of like I had been shooting a lot and I knew how to frame things. And that's the that's the full frame. I've cropped in from the sides, right? But it's it's basically a full frame image. And I used to shoot a lot in the frame. I'd look through the viewfinder and, and I was looking for full frame read on what I was shooting and a nice sort of little buffer around them. That was always my eye piece. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was following them, kind of stalking them, I guess, for a minute or two, because these this couple seemed so breezy and happy. And it was lightly raining in Santa Monica. And it was just so beautiful. And they were walking fairly slowly. And I just wanted to catch catch them 
in this in this uh, mood that they were in, and I wasn't thinking so much about shutter speed or any of that stuff. And fortunately, the accidental part is whatever drag you're seeing in her mm -hmm. hair and their feet and the umbrella itself, and then the ground sort of red, a little bit more focused. I don't know. I love how that turned out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, Toby, for going back yeah, to you that. Thanks for yeah. showing that. So yeah, yeah, I'll just I'll just cycle through a couple more as you're talking a little bit about this. Sure. Yeah. There's a hotel room. A lot of times it'll be hotel rooms in different cities. This is Manhattan. This is the Four Seasons Hotel in, in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. And uh, they all have these great little mirrors in the rooms on these desks. And they had the electric, um, you know, the shutters and the, the drapes would go up and down with the with the James Bond switch and stuff. And it's all just so fun, so elegant and fun. Uh, mm. That's near um, that's near Independence in California, off the 395 uh, highway. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, that's just... not the 395, but that's no. off of the 395. <laughs> I think in Independence, just cut off as you're going to Mount, uh, what is it? Uh, what's the mountain there? Uh, Shasta? No, Whitney? Is that Whitney? Whitney. That's okay. Whitney. I hope okay. that's Whitney. Yeah, right. Sure. <laughs> uh, is, is, is there anything in particular that, that draws you um, in uh, photographically, <clears throat> Timothy? Um, or well, is anything interesting you happen to see as you're going about your life? Sure. I mean, there's a lot of imagery that will show, just like this image that's up right now, of a sort of a, um, a vanishing point. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've done a lot of drawing as well with charcoal over the years, even uh -huh. before my photography. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's like high school and college. I really started to get into charcoal drawing, and I would, I draw, I draw this theme a lot with the road going to down to the point, you know, and mm -hmm. telephone poles and that sort of thing. So there's something about that that always seems to catch my eye. Yeah, uh, in a way, I've got a lot of, a lot of that kind of imagery, and I like. I don't know, man. I like clouds. <laughs> I, like, yeah. I like light and dark. You can see mm -hmm. that there's a big contrast. I like either things that are just accidental and fun or something mm -hmm. that's a little tighter like this because it's grand. Mm -hmm. This was a much more like fluid walking down the street in New York, uh, grabbing a picture of mm -hmm. this guy. Once and it again, kind of cool distorted motion, his yeah. head. So is he an alien? Is that even a human? What is it? Mm -hmm. And because I had drawn a, uh, drawn a lot um, with charcoal, that kind of informs some of this work too. Some of mm -hmm. it looks very either painted or or smudged. And I like it. I like grain. It, some might say that that's just an excuse for you not being a great <laughs> shooter early on but mm -hmm. i don't know maybe mm -hmm. a little bit of both but i just was never very interested in getting super tight i wanted something i printed this because it said something to me mm -hmm. you know i have I, one of my well-known bosses actually has this image in his house he bought that image it, he loved nice. it too interesting nice. I, yep. don't know. I see and i see risa in the uh, chat says uh, hi timothy she's found some more wall space so um <laughs> that's great risa, oh my god that's risa great. risa kaplan is uh has been a, such a patron of my work risa has that image right there oh, okay uh, risa the kaplans are, are so uh, they're wonderful people but she's really taken a liking to my work so she has several of my lamps mm -hmm. several large prints and she's got some of my fabric uh, prints as well. Awesome. Uh, and she's very sweet about that. And what I'm drinking tonight, by the way, is <laughs> Johnny Walker Black, which is what my father, who also oh. just passed away. Man, no. what you is know what? up? I'm sorry. But anyway, he used to drink Johnny Walker Black. And he so did. I was really okay. feeling like if I'm going to sip something here on the night. Wow. So I had mentioned that that was his drink to Risa and Michael and uh, and they're big fans of my dad and they watch the Virginian all the time. But they well, well, sent me a yeah. bottle of Johnny Walker Aww. Black in the mail after he passed away. Aww. And it was the sweetest thing. But she's she's been great. She's been a great patron. So, mm -hmm. yes, wall space. Good well, timing, <laughs> Lisa, my dear. Uh, she, so I have, I have two, two things, Timothy, I, I want to talk about here just real quick. Let me just read 
speaking about wall space, and then I want to just talk just for a second about your dad, because I think that's so <clears throat> cool. Uh, sure, man. Uh, and I, I pulled up a couple things just to show people, because I know we're going to have people that are going to know who your dad is. But uh, um, this was uh, something that I pulled that was a, uh, uh, a collector, and her name happens to be Risa Faith Kaplan. <laughs> so... Uh, Richie, see, I, see I didn't I mean. know you were going to be on tonight. This is how this stuff goes. This is great. <laughs> so thank you. Uh, this was awesome. Uh, aside from being an absolutely wonderful person, you are an amazingly talented artist. It is an honor and privilege to have your prints grace the walls of my home. From the moment I was introduced to your work, I was drawn in, literally, wanting to be transported into your images. I cannot stop staring at the pieces. Each one makes me smile. They truly capture your aesthetic and gentle soul with such a beautiful tone. Timothy, please know I have you to thank for my love and appreciation of a photographic imagery. That's that's awesome. Wow. Your unique that's image lamps really. create a serene mood in whatever room they are placed. Each one is quite beautiful and adds more ambiance to a space than any other single object could. They are captivating. After framing one of your prints, I realized that the room would be better with an additional print and then another and then another. Of course, the more image lamps in a room, the more beautiful the room. I plan on creating a Timothy Drury gallery in my home, and I yes. am well on my way. Timothy, I have your work displayed with great love and pride. I treasure everything. Your most faithful collector, Risa Faith Kappel. And Risa, you are online tonight. Thank you. That was not Risa, planned. Thank you. No, that, that wasn't. That was a list. I sent David a list of some bio, biographical material and some testimonials over the years that I thought were very moving and really telling of what my work was about in somebody else's voice in a very articulate yeah. way. So that was definitely one of them. You're reminding me of when Risa sent that to me. I, I asked her, you know, I said, would you, would you be at all willing to say how you feel about this work? And, sure. And, she, yeah. and that's what happened. That's awesome. And I, I want to, uh, you mm -hmm. know, put this uh, for us to kind of touch down the road. I mean, just what a fantastic testimonial. Um, I, I'm sure we have some photographers that would love to have people as passionate about their art at some point in the future as you do, Timothy. And so it'd be curious to hear a little bit more about how you've connected with people and how they found your art and, and gone about that. Oh, OK. Well, it's changed over the years. Um, once I got to the point after shooting a lot and making a lot of prints and finding a, like a, a thread of a style throughout what I was doing that seemed fairly strong, uh, I started to do outdoor art festivals, just local stuff down in Los Angeles in the valley, Woodland Hills, Beverly Hills. I did that show. I went to Catalina and did the Avalon Art Festival, which are, you know, moderately larger, larger things. Uh, where they would give you a prize, you know. I got a ribbon for second best picture in the mm -hmm. Avalon thing that year. The thing that won was this magnificent widescreen super tight picture of the inside of the casino building in Avalon, which is a, a wonderful art deco, mm -hmm. beautiful piece of architecture. Uh, but mine was uh, <clears throat> was uh, an old woman in Central Park who was uh, s seemed to be sort of stuck in place. I wish we had that picture. I don't know if I sent that to you or not. Or I not. don't. That doesn't sound familiar. No, it's too bad. Yeah. But it's a, it's an image called Central Park. And, okay. Uh, that's what won. But so I started showing it at um, these regional kind of festivals and selling pieces, selling prints. Um, meeting people who wound up coming back around later with commissions. Uh, I met a, a lot of very interesting people during that period. And I, and I was really interested in that. I was interested in how showing my work at a festival uh, allowed me to meet a lot of different people and a lot of different artists, too. It was really, mm -hmm. I, I enjoyed that a lot. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'd make a little dough, too. Sometimes you wouldn't make any dough at all, but you'd still have a great time. And I used to do joint shows with Jerry Tarshish, my buddy, and he would Explain show his that? work. What's that? <laughs> a joint show? <laughs> sorry. Oh, a joint, You're a musician, yeah. man. Come on. I'm well, sorry. I couldn't. I had to go there. Very, I don't I even know if I was, <laughs> I was using, using the, that back then. I don't know, man. Uh, no, it was a great time to be able to hang with Jerry, 
he showed his work, I showed my work. If we sold nothing, we'd still be able to sit there and hang out and have a great picnic. And he'd smoke his cigarettes that he would roll himself and I would have a glass of wine. And, um, so so cool. that's how I kind of, uh, yeah. kind of developed a network of people, excuse me, uh, Very cool. to show my, my uh, stuff to. I don't yeah. know, I guess I could mm -hmm. go further, but what, uh, what else? Oh, that's good. David, what did you, you wanted to lead into a little story about the dad? I, just real quick. The dad. Yeah, because you've got Johnny Walker there. I don't want to forget this. Uh, your dad just passed away, and uh, he was, you know, I, I know you had a journey there with your mom and dad and all these different situations. But, you know, your dad, oh, uh, a lot a of journey. people that are you, a lot of people that are watching uh, will know the Virginian. And James is. Drury, uh, man, dude, you look just Howdy, like your dad. Oh, yeah. don't even start. If only. I wish. Yeah, well, <laughs> Look at him. He was he was a very very good looking man for sure. Yeah, and so how long did that show run? I'm just curious. It was like it was nine, a, it was nine, nine seasons. Sixty two is when it started. Just right when I was being born. Right after I was born. And they were yeah. they were ninety minute episodes. Is yeah, that, one of right? the few ninety minute uh, episodic television shows at the yeah. time, and it was very popular. NBC Western mm -hmm. for nine yep. years. And it ran its course, and then it kind of changed a little bit. They changed the title of it to "The Men from Shiloh," which was a it was a very odd thing. It's like the same show with a different title. It was <laughs> strange. Different. But I was a little kid, so I didn't know what was going on. But looking back, that was odd. It's a good show. Um, I'm very proud of my father. He really kind of made a mark uh, in in television. Yes. And a lot of people love that show. A lot of, wow, man, the press that happened after he passed away. New York Times, Washington Post. Amazing. We, we have somebody. on and on. Wow, this yeah. is so great. <clears throat> but we have a comment that just came through. I know, Timothy, you're not seeing these comments, but we have a comment that just came through from Teresa Rice. Oh, I uh, see it there. I'm, you see that there? Look at that. I have a photo of James Drew with my dad in the drugstore where he worked. What? <laughs> That's cool. How cool is that? Right? Cool. Uh, what, That's what, cool. From what era, I wonder? From long ago or re more recently? My dad yeah. was still actively going out to yeah. rodeos and things and, and signing. He would be signing his photographs, uh, sometimes with the, the rest of the cast of The Virginian and other television shows. Yeah. He so, was still okay. still doing his thing, still very snappy. Um, I was able to see him last December. I was doing a show there in Houston, Texas, where he lived for many years, and it was one of the uh, one of the few shows in recent years that he was able to actually come to. So that was cool for me. I don't. It was probably just like this noisy, cacophonous thing for him, maybe. But he had a great time. We had some pictures taken. We had some laughs. <clears throat> and that was really the last time I saw him. And then I spoke to him a few times uh, after that. And then oh. poof, you know, they're, when they're gone, they're gone. I, I have a lot of questions now that I have for him. Uh, but you got to just ask your questions while you're around, <laughs> man. Mm -hmm. Like, whatever it takes. But I had a, I had a great run with him. He and I, we were estranged for a few years, for a period of years after my mother passed away. And then we got back in touch. And uh, it was great. I was on, on the road with uh, Don Felder and Styx. We were doing a tour in 2014 and we played in Houston. And I just, after about 10 years of not speaking to my dad, I just picked up the phone and called him and said, hey man, <laughs> you want to have lunch? Let's... You know, which I don't know, which was probably a brave thing on my part. Not that he was mad at me or I was mad at him. It was just, it had been a long time. It was, it could have been very awkward. But anyway, I reached out to him and he uh, came to the hotel where I was staying. And he pulled up in his car as I was walking out of the hotel. And he bumped into Tommy Shaw first. And well, so Tommy, Tommy from Sticks, from yeah. Sticks, who was also a fan of my dad's, and I had been telling Tommy <laughs> a little bit of the story about like, well, I haven't seen him in a long time, man. He's coming today. This is, I guess, it's going to be cool. And so he he runs into Tommy first and shakes his hand, which was a really sweet moment for me. And Tommy was all smiles. And then my dad and I had this amazing long lunch before sound check in Houston that day. 
and really talked some things out. And then since that time, then we were much more in, in touch, and I saw him several times. And he saw a couple other uh, shows that I did after that in that 10-year period. Uh, yeah. But anyway. Yeah, man. He, he really well, he made his mark, like I was saying, and it's really great that people like reacted the way they did to his uh, presence in their life. Really yeah, cool. man. And, mm -hmm. and you know, uh, Teresa did answer that question. She said it was in the 60s when he was going to be at a county fair. So, uh, oh, that, how that's cool. Where, where that Thank you, Teresa. Taken. That's really you should post yeah. that somewhere. So I, I would love to see that picture. And, and you know, we're going we're gonna to start transitioning a little bit here. Uh, anybody did you, what I wanted to do, Toby uh, and mm -hmm. Timothy, if it's OK, um, Allie, if you have any other things that you want to right now talk about. But I, I'd like to we're on the theme of your parents, you know, um, Allie and I have personally a very special moment that we had with you uh, where when we first met in person, uh, you actually invited us to your home and you were composing uh, a song yeah. uh, and then you shared the story with us about the song and that that was pivotal in where we're going with your performance cube and some of the things that have happened. So. Uh, yeah. Maybe, um, Toby, I don't know, can you pull that <coughs> we can play it, show a little bit about, maybe just share a little bit uh, or play a little bit about that. And then, oh, wait, and then, should we, we, should we describe it a little bit more before show, you're going to show the video sure. of that, that piece of music? Yeah, is that okay? Let's wait, you wait for a second. Mm -hmm. Like, okay. I could yep. just give a, just a brief sort of thing about that. And it was really lovely that you guys were there at that moment. But my mother who passed away in 2004, um, was um, I was looking for some productive way of dealing with the feelings I had about about that, and I had been living in moved out of Los Angeles, moved to San Jose in 2005, and when we got together at my house, it was a few years after that, I suppose. Um, yeah, it was like 2011. 2011, quite a bit later. Okay, yeah. so but I had been working on, on my through my feelings about my mom and. Um, uh, this notion of the whistle that she used to, to, to do when I was a child to come home, the dinner's ready, you know, with, <laughs> there'd be a whistle. And it was like a lot of kids got summoned back home by the whistle, right? Uh, but that, that was a really cool thing in the summertime. Just to hear that sound was like, okay, I gotta go, you guys. Dinner's on. And, and, it, and I would run back home. So I was kind of like, um, living in that place and wrote this piece of music that had that uh, melody to it that was the same as her whistle. Um, and then, yeah, so play it now. And there's mm -hmm. another story about my buddy who came to help me record that piece of music that I want to tell you that's very interesting. And th this was at uh, MIT, right? right? Yeah, I debuted at MIT in 2012. To me when I was a little kid uh, in the summertime when she wanted me to come in for dinner from playing out in the neighborhood, she'd open the front door and whistle this simple little melody. And I've been thinking about that lately. And so I developed this piece based on that. And it's called From Where She Is. And I hope you enjoy it. Yeah, man. 
Um, you don't have to play the whole tune, but that was kind of like where we went with that. So uh, the funny thing is that I had I had wanted my friend Stevie De Stanislaw to come and play uh, brushes on a snare drum for that sort of jazz trio um, arrangement. And he came to San Jose to visit me for a couple of days. And because I had recorded it without a click and um, it, the tempo was sort of like really flowing, it was, it was difficult to kind of play a track all the way through that would make sense. And Stevie is a brilliant, brilliant drummer. <clears throat> but he did a few passes on the snare drum and I kind of looked, took a look at that later. But at the end of one of the takes, because the melody was, ba -da, ba -da -da, he just spontaneously at the end of a take whistled that into the microphone we were using to record the snare. And Stevie is a brilliant whistler, <laughs> as you can hear. And I and it was just goosebumps and like cold chills and and. He whistled that at the very end of the track so I could like bring it and move it in. I said, man, do you understand that that is the point of this song? That was my mother's whistle. That's what that melody came from. And I'm not a whistler. And I never even thought necessarily that I would put a whistle into it. But when he did that, it just, it was, it was unbelievable for me and for him too. He had been looking at pictures of my mother and sort of artifacts around that I usually keep around me. Like you'd see pictures and paintings from the, my uncle John did these and just things that are dear to me. And and Stevie is, is a very um, intuitive cat, a uh, lovely cat. And he whistled this thing, it was just such a trip. So that actually became the key component of this song was this spontaneous, very emotional moment, which is rare very rare uh, but, so but it, it, you <laughs> added so we're evolving here because you, you're going from playing touring you're composing your own music Ali you know what it was like when we were there uh, when we first heard that we feel so privileged to be the very beginning of you putting that together and it was, Ali, it was great it was emotional Ali, for you guys I, I think it was and Ali I don't know do you remember when we walked into his his place here in San Jose and he had the <clears> fabric <throat> um and he had that fabric around and we were asking him well what's what is this what are you doing with all this and he started sharing with us a little bit about it. that was I mean do you remember that hun? yeah I feel like that was most likely the beginning of the the cube experience he had a beautiful printed image of his mother walking on the beach. Is that right? That's right. Yeah, yeah. that's and right. He had a, a sheer fabric hanging in front of it a few inches. And then he had a fan, very lightly blowing fan that was uh, moving the sheer fabric in front of this image. And it just, it just spoke to you and just really gave you goosebumps. And then he told us. Um, more about his mom and right. then, then you shared how you have this idea. It's really, really deeply, a really deep artistic vision of using all of your senses. Yeah. I mean, all of my senses and all of, all of what I'm able to do well, <clears throat> I think is what it comes down to. Mm -hmm. Continue. I didn't mean to interrupt, but yeah, I think you were, you were almost like just like projecting this this crazy art artist idea of, of 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 having a visual, an audio, um, your sense, all, all your other senses as well, your your taste, your smell, <laughs> yeah. and you just thought, wouldn't that be amazing? <laughs> Like one encapsulated sure. thing for everything, like oh, cooking, so singing, thing. playing, yeah. photographs, drawing. Great wine. Great, we were great all, wine, we were, laughing, dancing, kissing. Oh Dude, we were all well. sitting there, and I mean, we were all getting chills, and we were in tears, and we're sitting there, and we're thinking, okay, this that guy. That sounds like food poisoning, though, just to stop <laughs> No, no, not, not in a COVID but, or a food poisoning kind okay, of way. Okay, so like it was an good, actual good, visceral no, experience. No, because we were in your place. You I mean, we are with somebody that has played in front of millions of people. You are sharing this intimate experience about your mother with us. 
And Allie and I walked out of there and just went, I mean, I can't even say live what we said to ourselves, but we were like, holy, th- like we just experienced. You can say crap. From, you can say well, holy can say crap. crap. Okay. Really? Yeah, I I think think it's good. It's allowed. Mm-hmm. Crap okay, holy crap. But there was more to it. But, you know, we were <laughs> we were like going, okay, this oh, I'm guy, so glad. I'm so he glad. gets it from an artist standpoint, from a visual standpoint, from a music standpoint. And uh, but that was, as Ali mentioned, that was leading. And in, in that little short video we just saw from MIT, yeah, that was the yeah, beginnings. Yeah. The beginnings so, of that projection yeah, so, thing. So maybe we can pull up, um, kind of going out of order. I, I'd like to talk a little bit about how it evolved, maybe, Timothy. Sure, uh, maybe, man. Maybe after Sorry. that we can show maybe that little time lapse of the setup. Uh, maybe that'd, we can just, that'd be cool. Yeah. Let's just show a little bit about what that now looks like uh, and how, well, so how it came to be. Yeah. The, you saw a little bit of it in the video that we just saw. I was in front of a, a piece of fabric, and that piece of fabric was hung about a foot away from the wall behind it. So that's all mm-hmm. behind me, right? And so I project from from forward, <laughs> kind of <laughs> through me and onto this fabric, and then it would hit the wall, and it created a sort of dimensionality between the the image, especially if you walked around, there'd be this parallax thing that would happen. So that that was the, the first beginnings of it. Then I did a show in Carmel at the Winfield Gallery, uh, actually prior to that in 2010. And I had set up two triangular sort of looking screens in either corner of this room where I was showing my work, big prints. I performed music and I had two projectors shooting imagery onto these smaller screens. It was a small, smaller space. Um, but then after that, once, once I took a look at that piece of fabric and the wall behind it in my house where I was doing my, my kind of like testing of this thing, I saw like I could look down this channel of a wall and a projected piece of screen, and I thought maybe we could extrapolate it out. So I tacked fabric in a square shape around my keyboard in the living room, which was my studio and living room, and you know it was everything all in one. Um, and and then I took the projector and and uh, I projected imagery onto the back behind me, you know, on the back facet of this square. And uh, it filled up the entirety of the square with imagery because it hits the back and light just keeps on going till it hits something and moves, then goes here. So it fills up this screen of the sheer fabric. So you can kind of see me, hey, there's sort of a picture, there it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And so that's a projector behind me and you can see me in silhouette there doing my thing and playing music that's uh, instrumental, film scoreish, emotional kind of music that's personal to me. And I show my images, my videography, and stuff that I've edited together. And uh, I think it's really cool. I think it's, it's, it's beautiful. So it went from that, that sort of like more flatter approach to this larger, uh, larger cube, eight feet by eight feet. Timothy, let me ask you, um, you are composing this music, these beautiful pieces. Do you have this visual imagery in your mind? Do you know, you say, oh, this is this is that photo I shot three years ago would be perfect for this this movement um, or vice versa? Or how does it work? Good question, man. Uh, it's a variety of different things. I find that when I'm shooting and I'm having a good day of shooting, <clears throat> and things are going well and it's just a beautiful spot that I'm shooting. Um, I find that I'll I'll kind of hear musical type of sounds uh, in my, in my head. (laughs) I've got (laughs) voices in my head, but no, just sort of like, I don't know. It's, it's, uh, it's the sound of the trees moving and the wind and all that. So some of it's not really musical. Some of it's just like, uh, uh, melodic but from an organic uh, perspective but then some of it I just remember a song and I'm just hearing it and my you know like you can think of a song right now and you hear it playing in your head I hope please <laughs> so sometimes it's that um, and then vice versa like if I'm just uh, 
the playing the piano stream of consciousness i think i'm i'm really looking at stuff i'm looking at images i'm looking at places i've been i'm looking at faces i'm looking at uh scenes going by and i don't know what they are all the time sometimes i do like i'll go oh yeah there's that picture going by while i'm playing so it seems to be really tied in so when i do the shows that i do the the content that's playing is is a collection of of these images and videos it's a very collaged kind of um thing it's not that it's not deliberate but there is a certain amount of like play in there mm -hmm. uh but the thing the thing is it's all coming from me it's all uh autobiographical right mm -hmm. so it's funny how often the random stuff behind me seems to work out with the with a, a piece of music that I'm playing. Yeah. And if I'm playing to some tracked music too, some other instrumentation, because it's just me, um, I change that all the time. Sometimes I'll try to match that up to like when something changes, but very rarely. Mm -hmm. And I just let it kind of be this I Ching kind of random, random me, more random thing. Very, it sounds very organic and showing the, the connectedness of everything that especially you create. Yeah, and I think everybody has that, right? I mean, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's not just your your photographs that you take, all your people uh, that are watching, your your group of people, um, or, or musicians that are watching. Uh, it's, it's everything. I like to cook as well. I like to draw. I like to have a conversation with my wife, you know, for two hours mm -hmm. about any subject, that kind of thing. Um, and I like a nice glass of scotch occasionally. <laughs> but here's something. Can I just jump in for a second? Just a brief thing about like, hey, Timothy, yeah. what's going on with this COVID thing? How are you dealing with that? And um, sure. <clears throat> it's really been kind of a struggle creatively for me. And I go online and I see my friends and colleagues just going crazy and doing great work lots and lots of productivity and singing and playing and and um it's very it's cool more power to them i just i haven't felt that until just very recently it's been very hard for me to just approach the studio or approach the the laptop to do editing <laughs> excuse me <laughs> um so I've been playing a lot. I've been playing the keyboards a lot and keeping my fingers working and just not really having an agenda with it. And the, the funny thing is, there is no real agenda for a touring musician right now. There's a, a bit of confusion about when that might start up again. It's been a kind mm -hmm. of a body blow to realize that this pursuit, this lovely pursuit of being an artist and sharing and expressing is a super vulnerable uh, occupation. Mm -hmm. uh, and that doesn't mean I'm not going to do it and artists shouldn't do it, but it's very, it's particularly, especially hard for artists, it, it seems, mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm doing way better off than many people. I'm not trying to make it like, oh, artists, oh, it's... No, but many artists are... Be are saddest about it. Yeah. it but it, yeah. it's been difficult to get into it. So I've, I've started slowly just going out, just getting in the car and driving to a place and not even really getting out, but like driving to the coast. We live in Lucas Valley, and so we can get to Point Reyes very easily or go to San Pablo Bay. This was a couple of days ago um is it still downloading the resolution is kind of it, it, it's one. gonna snap oh, into uh yeah yeah oh there it is and and i do it you oh should yeah it. look yeah. and so i shot this footage i set up i found this amazing train track where there's just nobody's around oh, dude, and that's so awesome. <laughs> i set up the tripod and just did some slow-mos and and did some stills and the last couple of days put together this tiny little bit of a film and it's it's not like i'm making a statement i'm just i'm i'm getting back into the habit of editing 
and working on images and, and videos. It was raining that day too. It was pretty cool. And creating, if I could put words in your mouth, getting back well, into the habit of creation. And that's really the bottom line. Thank you, Toby. It, it's 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 creating. Yeah. It's um, and it's helping, man. It helps. I miss I miss friends. I miss hugging people. I really am. A, anybody who knows me really well knows that I'm a very affectionate, huggy guy. Wow, that is symbolic right now too, dude. I mean, and, well, there there's some of that. That's a pretty dark piece. I don't want. Yeah, but it, it's it's I don't want it's to paint too no, dark it's of a picture. It's, it's 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 beautiful, and 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 I. And I kind of talked over you i apologize for that i just no, no. we have had was so many to. well we have so many clients i say clients but they're also friends you know we, we have a very personal approach all of us with our photo enthusiast network members and toby's youtube and of course the mckay groupings and you know the thing yeah. is i can't tell you how many people have said you know this inspired me to get out i've been in a dark place and I'm, I'm sitting at home i'm i'm struggling and i you know i got out and photographed a flower or a bee on a flower or a hummingbird and it just it enlightened me for a moment because it's you know the first couple of weeks of quarantine it's like ah oh, this is great and then <laughs> it turns into a month and then two months and it's just you know so i appreciate that a lot and it that you're being authentic and sharing it like yeah as a creative person this has been a difficult time but you it's push through it you do you, you've gotten through and maybe this is going to end up in your in your cube and you know uh toby you said the word create uh, i want to read one other uh quick testimonial here right. uh, and then i think it would be cool to show your time lapse uh, we're running just a little bit long but we won't, we won't go too much okay time. okay yeah yeah man uh, sure so, whatever so you want from the create world conference and of queensland college of the arts in australia uh, i had the pleasure of hosting timothy as a performance keynote at our major creative arts conference in australia create world it is fair to say that his performance was a highlight of the three days his music was beautifully balanced with still and video imagery that was at times hypnotic and showed a wonderful junction of the visual and musical arts. The performance stimulated a good deal of discussion throughout the conference on the power of digital and analog arts mashup, which I think is just awesome because you have taken all these things and you've taken your heritage, you've taken, even right now, you're dealing with COVID in the future, but we're, you're, you're continuing to create and you're putting this together and you've come to this place through all of this that now the performance cube is happening. And I think it would be cool to show the setup of that and maybe just share a little bit about where you're going now. I mean, giving back, that's one of the big things. I was fortunate enough to film you and be part of your oh, uh, yeah. Sacramento College yeah. thing. I think this is where the setup actually took place. And I was amazed spending three days with you with students at a college in the photography class, in the audio class, in the music class, in the video class. It was yeah. like, no, I mean, it was killer. Was a mind tasting class. My God, it was great. Yeah, it was so great, man. You were there the whole time documenting it. I have got a lot of great footage of that time. It was so great. It was last November at Sacramento City College, and um, I was asked to come there for a few days and do these classes. And I, I just didn't really know how it was going to go, but I was really excited about it. Uh, and then at the end of the three day period, I did a performance, a performance cube performance here in their performing arts theater at Sacramento City College, a really beautiful theater. And that's me setting the thing up, the framework. And then I put the fabric up and um, and then people came to that show, some of whom had been in the classes that I was speaking at. So that was kind of cool. Yeah, I could show a little bit, bit of that uh, thing. Uh, let me know. Do you want audio with this one? I can switch and make audio come on. No, I, I don't okay. know, man. Like yeah. that's that's sort of what it looked like. I'm I've been yeah. trying to edit together much more pieces from this night. Um, yeah, and this is all mainly David's photography. I had some friends in the audience who were shooting some stuff, but David shot some great stuff that night. Yeah, it was really going, right. It was yeah. it was really memorable. It was really great. But the classroom time was really even not better, but it was so uh, out of my comfort zone. And I learned as much as I like taught, I guess, 
Um, but I want to do much more of that. There's another piece that we could show with audio. Is, is it uh, this piece? Give me just a sec. Yeah, maybe so. Okay. Um, yeah. I, just, I have to... Uh, I'm sorry. I'm, that's I'm, okay. I'm, no, 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 totally fine. Disorganized files, but no. But I think uh, why he's doing that is just amazing. That you know, you've taken this and you're giving back uh, the college experience. The people were so enthralled. Uh, you know, it's not every day that somebody played with the Eagles gets to stand in front and have a conversation with somebody on such a real level. You know. Yeah, and, we had a great Q and A afterward, yeah, and it was great, great moments in the classrooms. Questions being asked. A lot of great questions. A lot of really bright yeah. people, kids and older. Um, yeah, it was, I want to do much more of that. I, I really, I really want to focus on doing residencies like that again, whenever I can. Um, sure. It was, I'll go was, ahead and play that. We have audio now. Okay. Good. My name is Kurt Shearer. I'm director of commercial music here. And we are fortunate enough to have Timothy Drury here. Who, uh, wow. He's been here all week. Uh, working with the classes has been just a fantastic week, and we're so happy to have him and this performance here tonight. That's just a, that's cool. it's awesome. It's just Very a taste, cool. you know. I mean, just a it's little hard, taste. It's hard, it's hard because you know I was there, and and when you when you got to think about a, a a sound system just hitting you, and then the visuals hitting you, you know, and it was so cool to see the culmination of three days of teaching, inspiring, then come into this performance, and as you said, young and old people. I mean, I was watching people that you know. I know it sounds crazy, but you know, an 18 year old kid that honestly has never heard of the Eagles, which is mind blowing to me, but that was there, you know? Yeah, and yet yeah, you know, sure. other people that have been fans. I mean, I know in the chat room, we can't get to everybody. We got people that have gone to Greece with us, Cindy Clodier. you got some fans. Oh, online. hi Cindy. Yeah. And, and just, you know, but it was amazing to watch that. And so just share, I know you mentioned the word residency and for all of those that are out there, I, I want to make sure <laughs> I know this wasn't the plan, but I want to put it out there that, listen, if you or you end up watching this and you are have, after we get through this COVID thing and you are looking for somebody to bring in for an amazing conference, amazing situation, maybe for a corporation or if you have connections and want to see the arts because it's, it's just the arts have been cut, cut, cut. And you want to see the arts lift it up. Uh, there's grants out there and, you know, get in touch with Timothy because I know Timothy, that's your heart right now. So just share Def a little bit more about definitely. that. And, and yeah. I'm, 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 I'm very focused on that. I have been for years, but I've been able to go on the road and enjoy uh, making a living as a musician with various acts, various cool acts. But, um, but I've always had something personal to say, and I'm going to keep uh, doing that. But now as I get older, I want to see if that uh, rings a bell for anybody else just to kind of pass something along because it goes by very fast so i'd like to leave that and join that and be a part of um i loved being in college i gotta tell you i really loved it and i can kind of see some of these people and their faces and what they're and it's a it's a wonderful uh view of of a, my life back from then till now and i feel like i can feel what i was like back then and try to offer up something that might be of value to people now um so i'm focusing on that so yeah you know i'd like to find out a list of the grants or the places that are interested in doing that but it things have changed right now for a period of time, but when when they've uh, leveled off, let's say, that would be something that I would like to spend a lot of time doing. Traveling for brief periods of time, going to do residencies, 
going to Montalvo to work on a, a project, maybe working on this as a project, you know, the cube and me and what I'm going through as an artist, as just a micro, like a, like a case to study. Uh, but that's definitely uh, where I'm at. But I got to say, I do miss performing live. I miss my buddies on the road. I miss the contrast of traveling and playing and having all this activity and then coming home to this very chill, beautiful Marin kind of thing. Now it's all just beautiful <laughs> Marin thing. And there, it, it, I miss the contrast, you know, the activity and the silence. It's a lot of silence right now. Mm. It's an interesting time. And um, I'm happy. I'm happy I get to see more of my wife because I didn't see her yeah. for many months. And she's able to work from home, which is fantastic, which she loves. And she's amazing, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, she is. She is, man. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I would say uh, just w one thing we didn't highlight, and then we've got a couple questions, but, uh, you know, during this time, not only for the future, but right now, if you're interested in Timothy's work, uh, maybe you could pull up just a couple photos of those lamps better, because yeah. you see the one behind me, oh, and you yeah, see the okay. one with Timothy. Yeah. I, I just talk about that just a little bit, because yeah, there's that a, is a catalog a cool deal. Yeah. I made sort of a catalog book, like a 20-page thing of the image lamps. Um, so explain the picture. process of this. Yeah, what, what, what are we doing here? It's images. And how, how do you? Well, do it's this? it's. Uh, I've done custom work as well, where I put other people's images into lamps, smaller ones, th these uh, kind of table floor lamps, and larger ones as well. Um, but these, uh, primarily, it's my images. It was my design. This lamp design, the wood design. There might be some pictures where you see the actual wood. I have a carpenter down in Los Angeles, who does this uh, really beautiful distressed pine furniture. And he's got a warehouse down in East LA. And, and I go down there and he, he gives me the, the wooden frames, real kind of rustic and rough. And I, I get the glass cut and I make the prints and I sandwich the prints between the glass and I wire the bulb and put it in there with a dimmer switch. And you can turn this thing around and, and take a look at it and put different pictures into it. It really is, it's a really pretty piece in a house, man. Mm -hmm. um, it's, I love it. And I, I sold um, a, good, a good amount of these lamps. Risa bought, Risa bought about six of these, I think. There, <laughs> and so there it is in the background. But if this was a darkened room, you can kind of imagine it creates a really warm kind of cool glow so there so yes yeah. image lamps contact Allie. me today <laughs> you should and we we have one i got one for ali ali uh, you want to talk about it because we we have this one right now it's behind me but ali we have this one and you love angels and this one really spoke to you right hun oh i remember that yeah that's the that one yeah it definitely did and um ascending angel that's that image uh, that's actually that's, uh, there it is go, go ahead, ahead. no i was just going to say that's central park we do actually like, use the oh you use the light oh okay <laughs> we, we we use it like every night that we're home oh that's so sweet we, yeah beautiful and uh recently uh, um timothy had a fundraiser up near us and he said i'm, I'm <laughs> donating a lamp but i don't have one so i'm going to take yours and i said no no i'm sorry that's not going to be possible that's not <laughs> i know you were really like no pal like make me. another I lamp. Said, yeah go ahead and i'm like no 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 i just <laughs> didn't happen to have any inventory and they you know they take a little minute to put together it's <laughs> not like 10 a day you know it's it's kind of a custom hit <laughs> the sort of they're not super easy yeah. to put together, but they're beautiful once they're done. And they're they're a little heavy, so to ship them is not cheap. But <laughs> you you would uh, oh anyway I don't know what I'm saying. Well, I'll tell you. Let's uh, wrap it up with just a couple. That, you know, I got we just have a couple questions right now. Have come oh, in. Uh, okay, all right. Uh, one of our clients, Pamela Nyman. Uh, she has asked, "Is there a Greece tour coming up?" And the answer is, <laughs> there will be. 
Obviously not right now. Uh, <laughs> we have actually been talking about that, getting back there, talking with Timothy about getting back there. Uh, oh, obviously please. 20, yeah, 2021 is not going to happen now because our entire 2020 has moved to that. But I really would love to get there in 2022. And Timothy, we would really love to have you join us again. And, and Kate will come this time. Kate, Kate was not able to come, come yes. to the one in 2013. Yeah, This and time so, she will come. Oh, my God. And Toby, yeah. Chris will come as well. And so we can Sounds have good. this awesome, awesome time together and explore seeking us. <laughs> Cindy Claudia, she's like ready to go back already. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah, Cindy. Yeah. Cool. And, uh, so uh, that... Guys, when we get through this this <clears throat> moment and get a little bit on the other side of this and get kind of getting through 2021 and everything that's had to move and change around, uh, we are definitely looking at that. And we've got our buddy over there, Elias, to help us, you know, set things up. And we'll be in Seeking Us. We'll meet some of your friends in Santorini. You know, I mean, oh Dimitri yeah, is Dimitri is is a dear friend, my painter friend, Dimitri Kuliosis. Yeah, on icon, Santorini. icon work. In some of the stuff's in Byzantine the icons, yeah. yeah. Oh my god, he's so great. I have an, another question here from uh, I think this is somebody that maybe you know, Debbie Frompa, Frompa, um, maybe. Oh, uh, Debbie okay. from PA, <laughs> <laughs> so Debbie Frompa. <laughs> Hi, Debbie. Remember, David, YouTube user names don't have to be legit. <laughs> Hi, Debbie. Oh, I know, sorry. I miss seeing. Debbie. Debbie, Deb, from well, <laughs> Debbie had, comes to so many shows, uh, you know, Foreigner <laughs> and Don Felder shows. And oh, like that's awesome. Friends, well, she, show she friends. Asked, and we're friends, but I see her when we do shows. Oh, there it is. There's the question right oh, there. Oh, Debbie from PA. Too. Did you have a moment when you realized photography was important to you or just evolved after taking photos for a while? Wow. You know what, uh, Debbie? I think there was a moment, <clears throat> actually, where I was shooting a lot of stuff. And that was kind of keeping me going. But there was one image in particular, and it's uh, the cover of my uh, CD. Oh, man, if you could show that, that would be cool, too. Yeah, I give think, me a uh, second. There was like a screenshot of my Corridor CD. And the which is how I that, found out about you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. And that's how uh, I found out about you. Which is a cool record. It's been around for a long okay. time, but uh, people are still enjoying it. There was a... Uh, uh, a place in Point Reyes, not too far from where we live now, uh, with this tremendous uh, alley of cypress trees, again, with the road going down the thing. And I, I shot one frame of that, got out of the rental car, shot the picture, kept driving. And then when I got home uh, and looked at the proof sheet of that image, it was that picture. It was basically <laughs> that shot, and it was really kind of bright, a really bright summery day. There was a lot of growth on the trees. Anyway, this picture has, it's on the cover of my record. Um, it's been collected widely, this, this picture, and licensed for certain things. And this was quite a while ago when I don't know if a ton of people knew about this location. And it turns out now that if you Google it, it's it's the Cypress Tree Tunnel in Inverness. And every time I go there, there's 20 people trying to shoot there. <laughs> there was a Mercedes Benz commercial that was shot there on that road. So it's been seen countless times in advertising and in commercials. But back, I shot this probably 90, 91 Oh, wow. I don't think it was quite as popular of a spot, but man, oh, man. That, to answer your question, Debbie, long-winded, uh, that picture right there was like, all right, okay, I'm going to do more. I'm just going to do more of this stuff a lot. So, yeah, that was a turning point. Uh, so I guess it was. It was kind of a switch for me. Wow, that's super cool. cool. So one one moment in time, one capture, one time. That's awesome, man. Yeah, it was like a trigger. It was like, go do this. That's man. awesome. Yep. Well, cool. And I just I just want to interject. I mean, Timothy, you are still creating. You've got an active Instagram. I want to just share a, a couple of pictures from your Instagram. Oh, killer, um, man. That are just oh, yeah. absolutely Instagram. gorgeous. Thank you. Um, and of course, uh, you can follow Timothy. That's what I love about this connected world. Uh, oh, as soon as yeah. I find, yeah, there we go. Um, you know, and so uh, just yeah. some really pretty work from your travels. It's pretty stuff. I got a lot of beautiful, abstract, pretty stuff. But travels, you'll find more travel stuff. 
But it's still, I still Ooh. spend some time. Look at that. That's Mendocino. A lot of these are trips with Kate. Um, that's like, you know, a, a block away from here kind of thing up in the hills. Nice. So beautiful here. That's out in the bay. No filter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a lamp. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Barbara and Anthony, uh, my dear friends back east in Newport, uh, uh, Barbara has a lamp in her in her beautiful home rental there that Kate and I have to go to. But uh, she posted that, and then I reposted it, I guess. Nice. Ah, look at that. There's Manhattan looking all fuzzy and bright. Very cool. Very cool. Those are the ones that I've gotten uh, pulled up. But again, as you can Thanks, see, please man. give Timothy a follow at well, like uh, Timothy I, Drury on Instagram. I need to post again. That last picture there at the top, the last picture I posted was of my lovely wife, Kate, out at the beach. And uh, it's, that's like about nine, ten months ago. I need to post again. Huh? Appreciate yeah. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, Instagram likes to punish you if you don't post too frequently. But, you know, it's, it's you know, yeah. you're not, you don't, don't feel like you need to be, a, you know, a cog in the machine. <laughs> well, I hear what you're saying. No, it's a beautiful thing. I do like posting. I just, I just stopped yeah. for a while. There was no, no message in that. I just kind of lost steam. And then COVID kind of like, whoa, let's get all the remaining steam and <laughs> remove it. So, uh, but it's coming back slowly. And I'm awesome. glad David and Allie are healthy and have come back from yes. actually having the virus and dealing with that. And business has been tough. It's been a tough time. You know, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole right now, but man, thank God you guys are still here. I love you guys. And Toby, I'm very happy to meet you finally you too, and Timothy. become your friend. And I wish you the best. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And I, and I just want to do a quick shout out uh, behind the scenes. Uh, we have Roy McKee. Uh, you know, he's kind of an unsung hero here at Photo Enthusiast Network. He's a techie guy that, that helps clients out. He's been back behind the scenes answering questions, uh, you know, or running the chat room and sending us questions. And he handles a, a good number of tech, uh, technical questions for our clients as well. So, Roy, thank you as well uh, for being on tonight and helping us out. Uh, you know, you're behind the scenes making it happen. Really appreciate that. Thank you, Roy. Um, I'll say, I'll say, Timothy, uh, I am so thankful that uh, MySpace was around. <laughs> you would have me, guessed me it. too. I and, love uh, MySpace. Yeah, and you know, it was awesome. We, we, I saw your, you know, I saw your your album and your music, and then I saw another MySpace of you, and you had this big hair, and I was like, "Wow, who's this guy? Always playing white tremendous stuff? thatched roof of hair in <laughs> white stuff, especially <laughs> crazy, <laughs> nutty. What is that? Thing? Was, was that mandatory when when you when you oh, came no. on to the <laughs> tour? Were they like, "This is what your hair needs to look like," and pointed to themselves? Or? Well, I, I looked at myself in the mirror and said, "I'm about to embark on a tour with a hair band and white." snake fans would bristle at that uh, at that title but mm -hmm. legit you know i mean there was a lot of hair going on so yeah it was sort of sort of a thing that i felt i needed to do at the time and it was cool. appropriate at the time but that's cool well it's, timothy it's been, it's been great to 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 have a friendship uh you know in artistry and music and images and uh but it's been more I know for Allie and I, it's just great to have you and Kate as friends. And, uh, you know, Thanks, thank man. you for what you brought tonight. Um, that's you. what I'll say. Allie, anything you've got you want to share? Allie's in the jungle just room. Thank you. Good to see you. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that's where Kate and, I stay. Kate and I stay in that room, in the zebra room. There's it's a, so it's cool. zebra. The Such a great guest room. I love that room. Sure? Uh, sorry. Sorry. Anyway. <laughs> well thank you yeah i'm gonna uh, i'm gonna put up timothy you you gave permission for this people are interested in your lamps or have connections to the education world and want to connect and reach out here is your email um for them Ooh. to do that or your work no i didn't say my email <laughs> what <laughs> no no yeah, i'm happy yeah. for people to reach out but it's not going to be about hey man you know It'd be really great to hang. I mean, I don't want Will to. Will you autograph my boob? 
that kind of thing. <laughs> no, I'm not, I don't know if there's an email service for we'll that. We'll have to go through Kate's email address for that. She will have to sanction <laughs> any of that kind of activity. No, yeah, no, it's that's fine. Good. Please reach out. But yeah, that would be great if it was respectful. And like, yeah. Timothy, I want to buy one of your lamps. Or <laughs> uh, can you talk to me? What's the deal with your prints? Can you do a commission? That kind of thing. But yeah, Sounds reach good. reach out. I'm pretty easy to reach. It's not like that email address is super high high security. I mean, I'm pretty easy to find. And, and for folks watching, all, all of the links to Timothy's website, Instagram, and this email address are going to be right down below this video in the description. So be sure to just, just they're just a click away. Cool. Thanks, Very you good. guys. Thank you so much. This was fantastic. Thank you, guys. Thank, thank you, you audience. Thank you. Yep. Thank you all. And just a reminder, if you're watching this and you're not a Photo Enthusiast Network member, you can join. We have a fantastic price right now. You just go to photorec.tv slash join. That's the shortest URL to get there. And I'm going to just remind folks that, oh, uh, shoot, I made a mistake. So I have to I talk. I have to say episode three yes. next June 4th. So two Thursdays from now, we'll have Mark Loper. He is a fantastic aviation photographer on. We'll be picking his brain about the gear and what inspires him and another interesting talk that I'm really looking forward to. Cool. Yep, yeah. Sure. All right. Well, Again, you, Timothy, everybody. thank you so much, David. Thank you for making this brainchild for birthing this brainchild. I birthed it from you, Toby. <laughs> oh, whoa. Uh, no <laughs> gestures needed. No <laughs> gestures needed. All right, everybody. Thank you right, so you much. You have a great night. Everybody Wish you all have a good night. Yeah. Good health. Thank you.